everyone, Uncle Jess here. I have two Elgu Neptune 2S 3D printers sitting here on my workbench. It's because we have two different projects that we're gonna be running in today's video and they both have to do with the amazing Chuck Hellebeck or Chep here over on YouTube. He released recently a bed leveling sensor that you can either build as a kit or buy fully assembled and it should help you further ease the pains when it comes to leveling your 3D printer beds. And the second is that we're gonna be testing out his latest profile that is a very fast 3D printing profile and I'm gonna be putting it up against my own 3D printer profile that I use that I use out of Simplify 3D, but that's a whole nother story. And one of the things that you always have to deal with regardless of which printer that you're gonna be working with is bed leveling. At some point you're gonna to have to level and re-level the bed no matter which machine you're working with. And typically what I normally do is just use a piece of paper and go around the four corners of the bed until I'm relatively level and then eyeball it. And to be honest, that might be a fine option for you to work with. It's worked great for me for many years now. And even recently I picked up these feeler gauges that I can use to go around the different areas of the bed and again, use that as part of the bed leveling process. I'm not a huge fan of these, to be honest, compared to the paper. I still use the paper more than anything, but I'm very excited to check out Chep's latest product that he's designed and is selling over on Amazon. So I went off and bought these for myself. He has a kit version that's slightly cheaper. It's gonna require you to do a little bit of soldering and assembly. And then he's got one that comes fully assembled. All you need to do is 3D print a little attachment here that you can use to help further aid in your bed leveling process. I don't believe this is 100% necessary, but he just kind of recommended it. And speaking of bed leveling, I noticed immediately while this was printing that my bed doesn't appear to be level and I need to re-level it anyways. So this is perfect timing for this project. So Chep's also known as kind of the Ender 3 guy. He makes tons of Ender 3 videos and most of his files that he's created are based around that printer here. And the Neptune 2 is slightly different and has a different firmware than the Ender 3. So that's why I'm kind of focusing on today's video and showing you how this will work on this particular machine and thankfully he went off and released a new g-code file that you can actually run on the Neptune 2 to aid in this process of using his leveling kit. And speaking of here inside the leveler here so this is the one I'm going to be primarily using because I'm not going to go through the assembly process of the other one but I might at some point here. So inside the bubble wrap is the device itself. It's a card that he designed himself, which still blows my mind. I'm not anywhere near that technical, but basically how this works is you have a battery here that we're gonna insert in. Then we level the print head into the little cross section here and with the battery installed, as soon as there's a slight amount of pressure put on there, it should trigger the light to turn on. And as I mentioned, he also sells a kit version of this as well that is slightly cheaper, but it is gonna require you to do some soldering yourself. And that's just not something that I felt entirely comfortable with, even though I have a soldering iron. And for that 3D printed part, you're just gonna install it on the end where the little button switch is. And it basically just slides on like that and will help support it as you're going through the leveling process here. So nothing's gonna wobble or anything crazy like that. I forgot to also mention that Chuck has pretty detailed instructions listed online. There's also a QR code on the box here that'll take you directly to his page that has all sorts of files that you can use and instructions on how to actually get the, uh, get the kit assembled or if you just picked up the full version here like I'm gonna be using, how to actually run through and test this. And once your printer's preheated, make sure to remove any filament that you might have loaded into the printer clean off the nozzle, and then you're gonna download and load the CHEP G4 e-leveler file, the G-code file directly on your SD card and load it in the printer and run that. And it should go to all four corners and allow you to adjust the leveling here directly until the light turns on. So now just to make sure that everything is level, I'm gonna rerun that same file again. 
Again, just to confirm that I've got everything level. That was actually really easy to set up and use here on the Neptune 2S. And yeah, I think this worked really, really well. And surprisingly, this machine right here in one or two of the corners, it was way off, which would explain why I've been having some really hard time getting prints to adhere properly on this particular printer. Now, the original piece that I printed from Chep, I didn't end up using it. it. When it printed, it was a little bit too tall and wasn't able to trigger the light source when I was initially trying to do the bed leveling. So I just removed it and used it without it. And it worked, as far as I can tell, fine without having to print this extra piece to go on to the little board here. So now that our printers are leveled, it's time to move on to the next part of this little experiment here. So Chip just released a new Cura profile for his Ender printers that allows you to print crazy fast and a decent quality. And I'm very interested in testing that out. So I've gone ahead and modified that profile and made it available for the Elgu Neptune 2 printers. I'll have links to that down below. I'll be sharing that back with Chep. So if he wants to include it on his site, I'm gonna also post it on the Elgu Neptune 2 Facebook group in the files section. So using Chep's new profile in Cura, I compared that with my Simplify 3D profile and modified my profile to mimic some of the same settings. So I'm gonna be printing at the same 0.28 millimeter layer height, the same top, bottom, and wall thickness, the same infill of 15%, the same print speed of 60 millimeters per second, and the same temperature for both of the filaments. And I'm actually gonna be printing the same file on both machines, just sliced in those two different softwares. And what's great to see already is that Chep's new profile is showing it's gonna be printing at 59 minutes. And then on Simplify 3D, it was saying it was like one hour and seven minutes. So already that's saying it's gonna print faster than what I'm typically seeing on Simplify 3D. The speed at which this is printing is just blowing my mind. And it's just drastically faster than my Simplify 3D profile. I'm really interested to see what the print quality is gonna look like between the two but I more than likely will definitely be looking at further investigating the settings here and seeing how I can apply it to my own profile. The print with the new Cura profile already finished at 55 minutes and the one with my profile is still going and it's only 84% complete. And my Simplify 3D print finally finished, it took one hour and nine minutes. So about 15 minutes difference between these two parts printing. So now let's get them off the bed and take a look at them. Both of these prints honestly look really great. I don't typically print at 0.28 layer height. I'm usually just at 0.2 millimeter layer height. And yeah, the prints are really clean looking. And the one that came from Cura, it looks like it was just slightly smoother on the surface, which was directly on the build plate. Maybe this one was just slightly better leveled than this one here. Both are really clean. And again, the leveling on the, the printer, thanks to the, to the uh, easy leveler there is a great addition to things, but I'm so impressed by the time savings. And now I'm really interested in seeing how I can speed up some of my Etsy orders that I typically run on my Neptune two S's with this modified profile. Now for the real test for these electrical plate covers, because the files go with this Apple home pod stand that you can actually just slide into the grooves here. And then you can mount your home pod. Let's see if this actually fits. And my Simplify 3D print, it's not fitting. It's the tolerances are too tight there. I've got some overhang issues there that I might need to sand this in order to actually get it into the grooves. Uh, Chep's Cura profile print, and this is fitting in, but it's really tight. Actually, that's, 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 that's in. There we go. That was a little bit, uh, yeah, I had to force it a little bit there, but that definitely fit. It's a very 
tight, snug fit, which is not a bad thing and nothing broke when I actually put it in there. And while we're taking a look at these amazing prints off the Elgu Neptune 2S, I wanted to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor, which is none other than Elgu, the makers of the Neptune series of 3D printers that I so love and have a handful of that I use for my print farm for lots of my Etsy orders. They also make the amazing Elgu Mars series of printers and the Saturn and the now recently released and shipping Elgu Jupiter. Very excited to see that actually getting into the hands of people that pre-ordered that via the Kickstarter and seeing prints coming off of those machines. If you're interested in any more information about any of the products that Elgu offers, you'll find links to those down below. Thanks again to Elgu for sponsoring today's video. So if you're having bed adhesion or first layer leveling issues, I would recommend checking out Chuck Hellebuck's little device here. This worked really well for me and I'm going to be using it on my other 3D printers because it was so easy and straightforward to use. He's also got links to his files and instructions over on his website that I'll have linked to down below as well as a listing here that you can pick up this particular thing as in a kit or the fully assembled version that I was using in today's video. And yes, I know this wasn't the most scientific approach for a comparison between my profile in Simplify 3D and Chuck's here and Cura, just because there are so many variables and differences between the profiles, but in general for me, I almost always slice everything with my profiles in Simplify 3D just because of how much faster I'm able to print things compared to whatever I can slice in Cura. So this was a very pleasant surprise that I was able to see with this and now just again has me reconsidering things, how I'm gonna be slicing and printing moving forward. Let me know down below what you thought about this and if you're considering downloading and trying out some of those profiles, I would definitely recommend it. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now. Oh, and a huge thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. If you're interested in more information about my resin 3D printer settings, you can find those down below in my Patreon. And maybe I'll start tweaking Chuck's profile here in Cura and make a variation for myself.